Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of your favorite program, Health Affair on AIT. On the program, we'll focus on critical health challenges, issues of women and children with a view to finding lasting solutions. I'm your regular anchor, Oshomowa Daniels. From worsening health indices, poor working conditions that have resulted in series of industrial disputes, a non-functional national health insurance scheme, low budgetary allocation to increasing rate of medical tourism, it is no longer news that the nation's health sector is severely challenged and in their need of attention. The solution to these challenges is our focus today on the program. As usual, we'll start the program by taking you through the new segment. If WHO has given emergency use listing, meaning WHO has done their job, for this Pfizer BioTech, both cases are true. How much more regulatory agencies have approved the vaccine started with the uh, FDA in December 2020. In addition, WHO has given it emergency use listing. Then we started our own work, and I mean the COVID vaccine committee of NAPDA to ensure that all the eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed. So uh, for Pfizer BioNTech, our country can import it or get it from COVAX facility. COVAX facility is a group of uh, agencies that come together to ensure that low middle income countries can get access to vaccines and Pfizer BioNTech vaccine is one of them. However, uh, how it is gotten is Ministry of Health and Primary Health. The function of NAMDA is to approve so that if it is going to be ordered, it can be ordered. Going by the recommended preventive measures by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC to control the spread of coronavirus. Commercial bus drivers must not carry more than one passengers at the front seat who must put a nose mask on. These are seats been neglected. The commercial drivers are not guilty of this carelessness alone as many Lagos residents have thrown caution to the wind for various reasons. So the time COVID-19 day, we dance with the nose cover. We do carry one one person, but now they say COVID nineteen, so alhamdulillah, don't cool down. We do carry two person. They still believe it's a scam. I don't want saying because the government are not putting preventive measures. Okay, look at can you can you just imagine that something that has been provided for people to to sustain during COVID, you have been packed somewhere, rooted by someone. So in all this and when uh, all those things we are we are seeing, nothing was done. Nobody was protected over it. So with that, you think. People who believe them, who don't believe them. This development for some is worrisome and must not be allowed to continue. The mercy of the living God that has not sustained us in Nigeria. COVID is still how they are consuming and ravaging lives. It, is, it has in fact become a major evil of great consuming appetite. The country of about 200 million people. And then we are flaunting it that we are vaccinated a million people. That's a coverage rate. That's a wretched coverage rate of less than 1%. In fact, about 0.5%. Even the so-called 1 million people who have been vaccinated live under the illusion that because they are vaccinated, they are already protected. Go back to that pharmaceutical intervention, number one, non-pharmaceutical non intervention, number one. Number two, our government should do as quickly as possible, get enough vaccine to our people so that more people can be vaccinated. The more you vaccinate your people, the larger the number of people that are protected, the earlier we can get back into normalcy. With the recent increase in COVID-19 cases in India, Turkey and all the Western countries, they called on governments to restrict movement at various entry points. 
In one single day, in one instance, about 315 deaths were recorded in India. The federal government needs to probably ban movements at the ports of entry, especially the major international airports in Abuja and Lagos, for about three to four weeks, and then review the situation subsequently. The reason is simple. For as long as you continue to encourage an unrestricted influx of passengers from some of these foreign countries, so long you make our people vulnerable. Since the outbreak of the pandemic in February 2020, Nigeria has so far recorded over 164,756 confirmed cases with more than 2,000 deaths. This man, named Withheld, got to know about his HIV status at a very young age in 2002. Then, the awareness was very low. So for him, it felt like that was the end of the road. No cure, then. So now the first thing that comes to my mind was that, oh, is that I'm going to die at my tender age without achieving anything in life? Nigeria has indeed made progress with the control of HIV. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, 8.2 million persons at the risk of the disease were tested in the year 2020 and 350 identified. If this pace is maintained, as per say, the end of HIV as a public health threat is three years closer. Three years closer to controlling HIV. Next year, God willing, we'll control HIV in Nigeria. And this is the target for 2025. We are hopeful that at the rate we are going, we will achieve the target of 2025 by 2022. This envisaged success may however not be possible without increased testing. If you have cough, if you have fever, especially one that is uh, lasting longer than usual, you need to get to the hospital to get to test. It is only by testing that we will get to identify those who have disease. Poverty brings people closer to HIV. Likewise, insecurity brings people closer to HIV. So these are some of the um, uh, determinants that now we, we, we want to carry along as we push for the last mile, which does not only um, stop at addressing uh, the needs of those that are infected, it also includes addressing the need of those that have not been infected by preventing them from getting it. When you empower, empower them, that will increase their livelihood and in, increase their income generations. And, and we all agree that an idle hands is the devil's workshop. So once they have what to do, definitely that will reduce their prone to HIV AIDS. Know your status. When you know your status, the next thing is, if you are positive, then you start treatment. I abstain from unprotected um, sex, unsterilized sharp object. The need to address the issue of stigmatization and tuberculosis, which is a co-infection with HIV, are also issues of concern. One in every four Nigerians, according to the World Health Organization, WHO statistics, are suffering from some sort of mental illness, a situation that has worsened with the COVID-19 pandemic. A larger percentage of the affected persons as shown by the statistics also do not have access to care due to the burden of out-of-pocket payment and the fear of stigmatization. It is to bridge this gap in Lagos State that the telemental health care service line was necessitated. We have a very robust strategic plan for mental health in Lagos. Uh, mega cities are particularly prone to mental health um, issues. COVID itself is a source of great anxiety and all kinds of mental issues and distress. Uh, but speaking specifically, you know, we have three levels of hospitals in Lagos or health facilities, primary, secondary and tertiary. Um, and we're developing mental health capabilities at all three levels. And in addition to that, we're, we've, we're about to start a very large mental health institution at K2 Ejiring, which will be 500 beds psychiatric hospital and about a thousand beds of uh, rehabilitation. Usually they will sort out your problem at this level. If they can't, they will point you in the direction. But more importantly to people out there, the stigma attached to mental illness is making it worse in our society. 
people with mental health challenges are just the same as people with any other health challenge. Please, let's not stigmatize them so they can come out openly to access uh, help before it gets really bad. The occasion provided an opportunity for the Commissioner for Health to remind residents on the need to stay protected and safe from coronavirus. We have to be careful, we have to be diligent. We're keeping our guard up. Um, even if we get a third wave, we're preparing and we hope that if we see something, it will be a, a small spike. Um, but we are very prepared for a third wave. Um, and if it comes, we will address it as aggressively as we addressed the second and the first wave. The Mental Health Awareness Month begins from 1st May to 31st of May 2021. It provides a timely reminder that mental health is essential and that people living with mental health issues deserve care understanding and compassion as pathway to quick recovery. Nigerian uh, case scenario, we're still struggling to even have occupational health and safety legislation. That is where the whole ball begins. Many infectious disease outbreak have claimed the lives of workers in the line of duty globally, especially the current COVID-19 pandemic. The West African subregion has been worse hit in this regard due to what health experts have blamed on absence of infection control and safety policies at workplace. You can't respond to crisis at the face of crisis. There's need to anticipate what could happen. There's need to have preparedness plan. There's need to also have the capability in terms of training to be able to respond to crisis. And we saw this all play out at the face of this pandemic when every, every country went under lockdown. In going forward, what we have learned in this, in this outbreak of COVID-19, we sustain it. The non-payment of hazard allowance and poor working condition that has resulted in incessant industrial disputes also came to the fore. What safety are we talking about? I just told you that even COVID-19 allowances have not been paid. You keep saying there is no money. You can't pay health workers. You can't do this. In the same system, we are aware that National Assembly members earn 1.2 million on newspaper allowances. And then people put their lives on the line. You pay them 5,000 naira. The current hazard allowance paid a health worker in Nigeria is 5,000 naira. World Day for Safety and Health at Work is marked 28th of April every year as designated by the International Labour Organization, ILO, to raise awareness about the health and safety concerns of workers in the discharge of their duties. Dr. Dupe Ademola Popola, a consultant pediatric ophthalmologist with the University of Elorin Teaching Hospital, and Usman Yahya, a parent of a child living with Down syndrome, noted that Down syndrome carriers are useful members of the society. They posited that Down syndrome carriers contribute to the development of the nation's economy, hence the need to curb all forms of discrimination against them. As I'm speaking to you today, we have over 25,000 children with special needs across Nigeria that are in school. And I can tell you, beyond the 25,000 that are in school, more than twice that number have not gone to school. So why don't we prevent that? Think about how many people are begging on the street because they are blind, because they are deaf, because they are physically challenged. In over 80% of these cases, they are preventable, starting from pregnancy care. But more importantly, bath. Every first delivery or delivery after number four should be done at a proper health center that has the capacity to take care of challenges. So what is that uh, you must identify yourself with the challenge your child has? Like my son is a Down syndrome. I used to introduce myself as father of a Down syndrome to let you know that my, heart, my son has and it's just a challenge, not a disease. The saying that there is ability in disability captures the lives of Dayo Yaya, a professional hair stylist, driver, and proud owner of a car wash business, and Emmanuel, who specializes in photography, 
with great passion for music. And so what do you feel me? If you want to call me, you want to break out me. What do you feel me? If you want to hurt me, you want to break out me. Usman Yaya, the proud father of Dayo Yaya, however, encouraged parents whose children have Down syndrome to enroll them for vocational training that is less stressful. Every child with Down syndrome can have their potential optimized. And it will come from the family. As it stands, hope is not lost for carriers of Down syndrome as they can arguably be made useful members of the society. Nigeria contributes significantly to the burden of tuberculosis. Nigeria ranks the first in the burden of tuberculosis in Africa and ranks the sixth globally. So, we should all put on our efforts to ensure that we reduce the menace of tuberculosis in Nigeria. The Director and National Coordinator of Tuberculosis Program, Dr. Chukuma Anyeke, has bagged the prestigious Sir Amadu Bello Platinum Award as Garuku Matosa Arewa, as well as icon of societal transformation. Dr. Anyeke was given the award by the Northern Youth Council of Nigeria for a selfless service to humanity, advocacy for peace, religious tolerance, and good governance in Nigeria. Dr. Chukuma Anyike graduated from the University of Nigeria Medical School 29 years ago in flying colors. He obtained a master's degree in community medicine from the University of Ilori, Kwara State, in 2004, after which he proceeded to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine a manager of human resources, a consultant public physician par excellence. Dr. Chukuma Anyike has a special interest in the generation of research evidence for policy development, provision of effective and efficient health delivery system, as well as control of infectious diseases. He has many research publications to his credit that have brought about policy changes in the provision of strategies to reduce maternal and infant mortality, with regards to HIV, syphilis, and also the elimination of neglected tropical diseases. Under his watch as the Director of National HIV Prevention and Program Manager for Viral Hepatitis Control, a reduction of the national prevalence of HIV in Nigeria from 3.4% to 1.4% was achieved. Dr. Chukuma Anyike has served on the boards of several health institutions like the Community Health Practitioners Regulation Board. He also sits on several international advisory groups, which includes Advisory Group on Lymphatic Filarial Infection, Expert Advisory Group on Dengue Fever and Zika, the Expert Advisory Group on Human African Trypanosomiasis, also known as Sleeping Sickness, the WHO NTD Strategic Advisory Group, an African Union Expert Committee on NTDs. Dr. Chukuma Anyeke is also a member of the Global Steering Committee for the Elimination of NTDs. The body provides technical guidelines to the Director General of the World Health Organization, WHO, on NTDs. Under his watch as the Director and National Coordinator, Neglected Tropical Disease Elimination, Nigeria made a significant progress in the elimination of NTDs. We've achieved a lot in the country, and we were able to do that with a very effective and efficient collaboration between the government and the partners. We've been able to show that we can interrupt the transmission of river blindness in five states of the country. Latu State, Nasarawa State, Kaduna State, Zamfara, and Kibu. We've been able to document that we we have interrupted the transmission of lymphatic filariasis in Nasarawa State and Latu State, and other states are different levels of achieving that transmission. We have been able to interrupt blinding trancoma in 92 local governments out of 112 local governments that are endemic for trachoma in the country. 
and we will continue to do our best. Dr. Chukuma Anyike is currently the director and national coordinator, National Tuberculosis, Leprosy and Brulee Ulcer Control Program, a post assigned to him from March 1st, 2021. As a public health specialist, Dr. Chukuma Anyike is one of the technical experts that provides advice to the Honorable Minister of Health on strategies to cope the menace of communicable and non-communicable diseases in Nigeria. Welcome back. The discussion of how to fix Nigerian health sector challenges has been a running conversation by different experts from different schools of thoughts. I spoke with the president of the Association of General Private Medical Practitioners of Nigeria, AGPNPN, Ambassador Ugu Aik Udu. He believes that a more private sector participation is the way to go if we must achieve the universal health coverage goal. In the first place, we have been told that nations of the world that are succeeding with their healthcare delivery system attach prime importance. They declare health a priority because indeed, what is life without health? There is no life without health. So being alive is not enough. A man has to be alive and well to have value for life itself. And it's about healthcare. Our budgetary allocation ought to be minimum of 15 to 17%, but we hardly get up to 6, 7%. And even then, the appropriation is still an issue. So healthcare is grossly underfunded. Beyond that, the private sector, which is shouldering, as I speak with you, my members, the private sectors of this country, are the ones providing care for over 70% of the 200 million Nigerians across this country. But the question is, what is government doing to partner with them, to embrace them, and to say, yes, we are pursuing the same common agenda of making Nigeria healthy. We are not on the plan. We are just seen and accepted to be there working. And we have become like slave workers. The civility of the country appears to be dangling in midair. And as far as we are concerned, it could drop and explode beyond repair any day except something is done and done urgently. Anywhere in the world, the economy, the success or failure of any nation is in the private sector. Taking a cue from that, the health system is also in the private sector. Every productive Nigerian should buy health insurance. Those who are not productive, the vulnerable, the unemployed, the aged should have their insurance paid for by government. That is the only way you can bring everybody under that umbrella of universal health coverage. What that means is that the average Nigerian at that point, if he is sick, does not have to think of how do I get the money because he has an insurance card. If universal health coverage is brought to bear on this country, Health care will improve. Life will improve. Quality of productivity will improve. Nigerians will be healthier and happier and safer. That is the truth. And there's no way you can do it without the private sector. Nigerians are the same. Doctors do the same work. We see the same people. Any Nigerian that dies does not die a public doctor death or a private doctor death. That is why the government should see everybody as one. The house is one. As you care for A, you care for B. As you train public doctors, train private doctors. As you support public doctors, support private doctors. Because we are in the same boat. We share the same responsibilities. And we owe allegiance to the same nation. I imported an ambulance as a private hospital. That ambulance was registered as a truck at the wharf, the way you will appro uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, vet dangote trucks. The same rate 
was applied to a hospital. I buy, I bring in drugs for my patient, it is taxed. And yet, such materials, devices, medical equipment should be import duty free. That is what helps to stimulate life activity in the hospital. And all this empower the facilities to encourage universal coverage. Provide infrastructure, friendly loans. Finance is key. Accept us, support us. Nigerian health system will be reversed and the world will come here. The way they were doing in the 80s and 90s. People were coming from Saudi Arabia, from South Africa, from Ghana, to Nigeria to, for treatment. Today, we are the ones drifting. Something is wrong. It's about our leadership. We invite, using this opportunity, the government of the day, that when we meet and we send them our blueprint for the way forward for the healthcare system of this country, it should be studied and it should be implemented. We are coming to say to government, this is the way to go. Because we know what they don't know. We see what they are not seeing. They should ask us. They should carry us along. They should make us a partner from the table to design the policies. Don't design and invite us to work. It makes it like a square peg, a square hole. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. My name is Dr. Shodipo Olua Jimmy. I am a consultant family physician. I've been to the isolation center and I've seen people struggling to breathe while they use oxygen. We have a responsibility to prevent this deadly illness. Use your face mask. Practice social distancing. Wash your hands all the time. Prevention is better. If you're just joining us, it's Etofe on AIT. Now, let's take you to our nutrition segment and aspect of the show, where we'll bring you different fruits, food items, and their nutritional value. Snails constitute a major ingredient in most cuisines in many countries of the world. Snails have been in existence ever since the Roman era. They were picked up and fattened in small gardens until they reached a stage suitable for consumption. In the beginning of the Middle Ages, snails enjoyed the advantage of being considered neither fish nor meat, hence making them ideal food to be consumed during Lent. Snails are a great source of lactin, possesses anti-cancer properties, and helps in boosting the immune system. Snails are rich in collagen and elastin, which is beneficial for the treatment of skin diseases and broken bones. The venom extracted from the ocean snail is highly beneficial for people suffering from addictions, depression, and Parkinson's disease. Snail contains protein, 16.1 grams, water, 79.2 grams, carbohydrate, 2 grams, cholesterol, 50 milligrams, fat, 1.4 grams, omega-3 fatty acids, 218 milligrams, calcium, 10 milligram, iron, 3.5 milligram, phosphorus, 272 milligrams. The nutritional facts about snails could go on and on. Consumption of snails also helps in the brain and memory development of children, prevent heart diseases, lowers high cholesterol levels, and excellent for healthy fetus. I'm sure you don't want to miss out on our clinical segment. It provides you the opportunity to get vital health tips and diagnosis without the stress of going to the hospital to see a doctor. And when a woman is getting pregnant frequently, she's not like she's protected from having fibroids, so to say. She's not likely to have fibroids. On the other hand, we say the womb, that empty womb, the dormant, empty, the dormant womb grows something. 
the, the, the life does not allow for, for, for what you call it. So yeah, something must grow there. The dumbass woman has to grow something. So when the woman, uh, woman is not getting pregnant regularly, then they tend to grow, fi go, 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 grow fibroids. So th those are the two things we know about fibroids. Egg, that is, if, you're, if, the, if the woman marries early and then she gets, starts getting pregnant, then they are not likely to grow fibroids. Next on the show is our perception segment, a platform where your opinion counts on how to shape the nation's health sector for the best. Rather take the vi vaccine and die by taking it rather than not take and die. Because the science that has developed the vaccine is worldwide. When you say they want to kill some set of people, will they, will they want to kill the whole world? No. This is where we draw the curtain on the show today. Please do join us same time next week for another exciting edition of the program. My name is Ushua Mowa Daniels. Please cultivate the habit of regular health check to detect any problem in good time. It makes solution easier. Thank you.